Welcome to the Registered Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. This show is about Plymouth County real estate. Our headline for the month was Stability Reigns, Average Home Prices Continue to Rise. This show is being taped in September, but we're going to do, be doing a report on the August recordings at the Registry of Deeds. Our job at the Registry of Deeds is to record records for the 27 communities of Plymouth County preserve and protect those documents, scan them in, microfill them, create an index system, and try to be as customer service to the public as we can, helping them find what they need in their land records. So the first image you're going to see is of deeds, which is sales of property. So for the month of August, there were 1,196 deeds recorded. Uh, more than the 1,130 in July, down 3% from the 1,239 last August, but for the first eight months of the year, we're up 2%. Again, a positive trend in the market. The next image you're going to see is of mortgages. Uh, mortgages includes both purchase mortgages that mortgages use to buy property and refinances. There were 1,919 mortgages recorded in August, more than the 1798 in July, down 8% compared to the 2093 last August, and for eight months we're down 6%. Since the numbers have gone up, while well, purchase mortgages, the mortgages to buy property, have continued, a lot less people are refinancing. Of course, we always track foreclosure issues, Foreclosure deeds are down significantly over the years. 41 foreclosure deeds in August, more than the 37 in July. 49% less than last August, but through eight months, we're down 19% over last year. And a precursor to a foreclosure deed is a foreclosure notice. It basically identifies when somebody's in trouble and not making their payments. It was 71 foreclosure notices in July, up from the 56 um, in uh, June, I'm sorry, the month before, 4% less than the 74 notice last August. Uh, 71, first 71 was for August. And it's down 1% over the eight months. A lot of lenders are getting caught up with those that are falling behind. Um, you'll see a listing of foreclosures and orders of notice uh, by community, the 27 communities of Plymouth County. In this particular month, Plymouth had the highest number of foreclosure deeds, Brockton second, and Wayham third. So uh, we do a free training room at the Registry of Deeds for our online search. The next session is Thursday. October 4th, we do it the first Thursday of the month at 9 o'clock. Please call in advance to register. It's a good way to figure out how to navigate on our system and take advantage of everything we have available. Um, on our website, you'll notice a free property fraud alert. When someone records something against your property, you'll be notified by email if you sign up. Beware there are people out there trying to get you to pay a lot more for your copies of your deeds. There's a company out there from California looking to charge you $83 for a copy of that when you can go to one of our satellites and get it for a dollar a page. Uh, we still have the Rochester Historical Society in our display case in Plymouth at 50 Obery Street, our main office. And a point of significance that a lot of uh, stories are being written about this month are that we're 10 years past the foreclosure crisis of 2008. And there are a lot of good things that have happened since then. Foreclosures have st stabilized. Property values have gone up. Uh, post uh, foreclosure crisis, a lot of people lost the values of their property. When property values have gone down, most of those have caught up. So for all those people that were so-called underwater at the time, meaning the mortgage was 
uh, higher than their property values, that has pretty much changed around. And property values continue to go up. I think we went up 9% last month. So my guest in the next segment of the show is Joyce Asak of REMAX Synergy. And she'll be talking about the role of the realtor in the real estate process. So we'll see you in the next segment. Welcome back to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Registrar of Deeds of Plymouth County. In this segment of the show, we always try to do something educational. In nature, we've had surveyors, we've had appraisers, we've had commercial lenders and many others. And of course, uh, our primary audience and, and uh, our primary guests over the years have been realtors because they're at the ground level in what is going on in the real estate community. I have a great guest with me today, Joyce Asak of Remax Synergy. Welcome, Joyce. Oh, thanks. thanks, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. So why don't we start off by you telling a little bit about yourself and how you get into the real estate business. I've always had a passion for real estate ever since I was a child. Um, so I want to say probably late 90s, I, I started looking into taking a class. And probably around, uh, I put it on hold, and then I went back and we thought about it. And I said, okay, you know what? I really want to get into real estate. Mm -hmm. um, so I took the class. And I was currently working for an attorney at the time. And um, so I just said, you know what? I'll take the class and we'll, we'll put it on the back burner. It's mm -hmm. always good to have, um, you know, a plan B in your career. So I dabbled here and there with the real estate. And then it started taking off. And when it, when it started taking off and I really saw that I enjoyed it um, and I enjoyed working hands-on with the clients, um, eventually it led me to working uh, full-time. So... I was actually working for Conway for quite a few years, and then Remax Synergy. Um, my broker, Lewis Martins, opened Remax Synergy about a year ago. Where are you located? We are on Pleasant Street. We're in the old Red Cross building, oh, 281 right. Pleasant. Um, we do have a lot of walk-ins that come into our, our building. Uh, we do offer a lot to our clients, so we can go over some of those um, probably later on in our interview. Um, so he offered me a, a position there. Um, I love it. I love the flexibility. And it's just the working with the clients one-on-one -on -one is what really brings me joy on a daily basis. So how many people are in your office? Oh, gosh. We probably have about, well, he's got, he has his team. Um, so that's the Lewis Martin's team. And I believe he's probably got like maybe five or six on his team. Uh, and then he's got, he has individual agents uh, like myself. And I want to say probably about 15, 15 or 18 Good agents. Number, yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, he, he trains a lot of the newer agents that come in. Uh, and a lot of them are on the team. And he does help them as far as getting the experience that they need to get their foot in the door with the real estate industry. Good. So how are you seeing the current real estate market? We're coming out of the summer season and into the fall. What is, what's, what is, what's your experience been? Um, it's, it's been a roller coaster ride. Uh, the last year was a crazy year and I didn't think the prices were going to get much higher and that was proved wrong. Uh, this year, beginning of the year, the prices were high, but I want to say maybe after March, April, we started seeing a little bit of an increase. Mm -hmm. Um, usually in the beginning of the year, you don't have as much inventory coming out of the winter months. A lot of people are waiting for the end of the spring, summer to list their homes. So our inventory is usually low. Um, this year, I wanna say probably our prices started um, increasing probably May, June, mm -hmm. and then into the summer months. So when we do comparative market analysis on a home, it's hard to comp it, is what we call it, mm -hmm. to the early months mm -hmm. throughout the year. It's easier to do that. Um, every few months, we're gonna have different comparatives when it comes to pricing your home. So, for example, right now I have a lot of um, sellers are looking to list, and I try to explain to them, your, the price of your home is not going to be like it was in the high months during the summer. 
where a lot of families are trying to, you know, sure. get it in before the school system, right. get their kids registered. Right. Uh, the summer months are usually the busiest, and that's when you really can get more for your money. Um, well, actually, the prices are higher. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now we're going into the fall. It's still a little busy. Usually things quiet down a little bit towards, um, I want to say maybe towards the end of August until probably mid-September. We have a lot of inventory now. Um, so that's what's hurting, um, is when you have a lot of inventory and you're a seller, you can't really be pricing your home at an outrageous price um, because you have a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. um, so that we're finding right now is we do have more inventory. So, and I am seeing a lot of price breaks. So a lot of times they will price the home a little higher. Sure. Uh, thinking, let's see if we can get, get, get it into this price bracket. And then um, you just don't want your property to go stale. Right. And that's what we're seeing with the price breaks. Yep. Interesting. So. Because for, for quite a while, the uh, inventory was the problem. There was no inventory. We do run into that um, at certain times in the year. I've reached out to clients. I've reached out to family members and friends and colleagues. If you know anyone that's looking to sell, we're very short. Our inventory is short. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just the time of the year. Mm -hmm. um, usually people think, you know, from the fall into the winter months, things are really slow. Um, that's usually some of my busiest time in real estate. Uh, a lot of people figure, okay, the summer's over and we're just going to get out there. We're either going to list, and I do have quite a few listings that are coming on right now in the fall. Um, so it, 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 there is really no lull as far as sales. It's just, it quiets down just a little bit. And I think the schools makes, makes a big difference. You know, uh, families getting their children back to school or, right. you know, they, the end of the summer then vacation. They want, to settle, they want to settle in before Absolutely. they make the move. Yeah. Absolutely. So, no, it's, it's, still, it's, still, um, it's still a seller's market, but it's a little bit, I wouldn't say a buyer's market, but they have more inventory. It's yeah. not as... Um, it's, it, it, I'm not seeing the bidding wars that we saw in the beginning of the summer. Interesting, so. yeah. So if you were to give advice to someone who's ready to list right now, what kind of tips or advice would you give them? Oh, gosh. Somebody uh, that called you uh, this morning, what would you have said to them? Absolutely. I am what they call as a listing agent. I, I do list a lot of properties. Um, a lot of times my listers turn into my buyers. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not shy. When I go into your home, uh, the first thing I would do is say declutter. Less is more. Um, so I walk through the home like I would as a buyer. Mm -hmm. I would um, guide them as to what they need to do with the home to get the home ready. Once you start packing, as a seller, it, it, it hits you. Yes, we're selling. We're, we're packing. Joyce is going to sell our house. So definitely declutter. Um, and the other thing is, is, is do the minor touch-ups. Uh, you don't want to, for example, an FHA buyer. Uh, no, nothing broken, no peeling paint, railings, little mm -hmm. things like that. So we go through the house. We don't want to rule out a specific type of a buyer, same, same as a VA buyer. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have the same guidelines. It's all about safety. So you don't want to uh, rule those out when you're getting your home ready. Um, decluttering, uh, doing minor repairs. And the one thing that I do, and I, I, I guess a lot of agents don't do this, but I actually sit down with the sellers. We, we get out their mortgage, if they have a mortgage um, still on the property, we get out their um, statement, we go over everything. I give them a ballpark range, mm -hmm. expenses, mm -hmm. and this is what you're looking to walk away mm -hmm. with. Which include deeds, excise, tax, selling it. The deed stamps. A lot of yeah. a lot of people don't realize about right. the deed stamps. The four dollars right. and fifty six cents per one thousand. Yeah. Uh, they don't realize uh, after twenty sixteen, there's a new the fire inspections. Um, mm. You have to have the ten year battery on your smoke detectors, and if they're hardwired, it, it all depends on the year. Mm. Um, so little expenses do add up. Uh, same with the final water reading. So we we go through the whole breakdown. Right. And uh, I, I, I explain all the expenses to them. That way there's no surprises, no surprises at the end. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a ballpark range of what they're expected to walk away right. with. Um, you know, and it's, and it's all about... Which they many times need to, to go to their next property. Absolutely, absolutely. Many a times 
the sellers need to get as much as they can because they are putting down a deposit mm -hmm. and they're turning into the buyer themselves. So um, it's very important that they do walk away with as much as they can and understand the process. So I'm, I'm with my sellers from beginning to end. So I wouldn't call it hand-holding, but it's the service that I provide. I'm there with you. I'm not going to leave you to run around and do all that work. That's, that's what I'm there for. So, um, and I attend all the inspections. So I do go through everything with them. And we do walk through their home. And we explain, explain the process that when you do get to um, a point where you do have a, a home inspection, mm -hmm. this is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. So many a times before the inspection, I will walk through the home with them. Mm -hmm. And anything that's a red flag, bring in a contractor, get that taken care of. In the long run, that can save you money. Um, and it can save you from having a buyer that gets scared off over something that's just very simple to fix. Buyer, yeah. So that's the one thing. I, I definitely, very thorough, whether it's a buyer or a seller, I, I try to be as thorough as I can um, with my clients. So let's flip it over and say it's a buyer that called you. What kind of things do you look for with a buyer as you begin the process? Our, our conversation is a little bit different. Um, so as far as a buyer, the first thing is, is everyone has their dream list. Um, I'll sit down, I'll listen to their dream list. But we need, we need a list that's going to be realistic. Um, so usually we set them up on MLS. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's a complimentary. A lot of agents will do that. So you will get daily emails once I know what your dream list is. Um, I usually make sure that you're pre-approved with a good lender. Mm -hmm. Because all that is is a pre-approval. Until you get through processing, right. nothing's a guarantee right. as far as your mortgage. So, what um, percent of the people, buyers, are pre-approved? A lot of them are pre-approved, but I do have a lot of buyers that come through that are not my buyers. Um, we've, had, we've had issues where, where they weren't able to get their loan. So it's very important that you speak with the, the loan officer. Mm -hmm. um, so even if it's not my buyer, and it's my listing and a buyer comes in, communication is key. So mm -hmm. I pick up the phone, I speak to the lender, um, I see if they're a strong buyer. Mm -hmm. If it's my client, I do the same exact thing. If it's a lender I mm -hmm. haven't worked with, mm -hmm. I try to familiar my, uh, familiarize myself with them. Um, so knock on wood, we've, we've been pretty lucky. Um, but it's key to also, as a buyer, you need to know this is what we want. This is what we're going to be able to get. Um, for example, Brockton, you get more for your money as far as square footage. Um, what you're going to get in Brockton, you're not going to get in other areas for square footage. So I, I try to see what their needs are, and then we go from there. Um, I've been known to spend the whole day, bring snacks, bring water. There's a cooler. We are house hunting all day long. <laughs> because I think the more homes you look at in the beginning, you will know what you really want. Um, and you'll, you'll realize what you can do without as a buyer. And that list changes after a while. Yeah, I'm told that it has changed over the years because many people are internet savvy and they're searching a lot um, through the sites that are available. Absolutely. Our buyers and our sellers are much more educated than they were years ago. Um, I find that a lot of them know what they want. They're more, they're, they, as, as far as familiarity, when it comes to um, the locations, the properties, things like that, the internet has helped out so much. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it does make it easier. Um, years ago, they had the little MLS booklets, right. and uh, they've come a long way. Right. So, um, well, you mentioned your, uh, the person you work with, Lewis Martins, is out taking pictures of properties. And those probably wouldn't have been as... Um, available or um, uh, specific, I guess, as they were years, that, years ago. That's what we do. Um, I think, well, it, when it comes to listings, professional pictures, we offer that as a service. Right. We, we take that cost. Um, and that's something that he offers to the agents. If you want to offer professional pictures, um, you can offer it to your clients. Why don't we <clears throat> share with the viewers your contact information. Absolutely. It's um, Joyce Asak with Remax Synergy. And um, <clears throat> my website's asakrealestate.com. And um, my telephone number, 
942-7146. Sorry, kind of losing my voice here. And um, reach out to me. I'd love to work with anyone. Great. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure for being on the thank show. Thank you. I want to thank Joyce Asak for Remax Synergy for a discussion of the role of the realtor in the real estate market. That segment of the show moves along pretty fast. We re didn't even really have much a chance to talk about changes over the last 10 years since the foreclosure crisis. It's certainly an important issue. I want to re-highlight before we get into something lighter in nature, some of our great Plymouth County history. Now, 10 years ago, we had a major foreclosure crisis. As people know, uh, I spoke to a reporter this morning who's doing a story about it. I've seen multiple other stories in the various media since then. But a lot of people don't remember how difficult that time was when a lot of people were facing foreclosure for a variety of reasons. Uh, many times they had refinanced a lot. Many times there were personal health issues, employment issues, and they had high mortgages uh, that they had taken out um, because values were going up and up and up. And then when the property crashed based upon the bank's feeling and all of that back in 2008, the whole marketplace came tumbling down. Thankfully, we're 10 years out from that. And when Joyce was talking about all her um, perspectives from what's going on in the real estate market, that purely is a symbol and a sign for how far we've come since that time. And for anyone that remembers it, I'm glad it's behind us. I remember there were 800 people in line to meet with their federal housing councils and their lenders over at Christos II, and then another event over at the Unknown School when people were scared to death they were losing their properties. And certainly for most people, their home is the most valuable asset. And so be vigilant about anything that happens with your property. But on a lighter note, in this segment, we talk about some of the holidays for the month. Labor Day was September 3rd. Rosh Hashanah started on the 9th. Patriot Day, the 11th, in celebration of 9-11. The 18th is National Cheeseburger Day. Yom Kippur is on the 19th. And fall hits us beginning on the 22nd for the fall solstice. A couple people we're going to talk about in our, from our notable land record collection. We have uh, available on our website from over the years, over 90 uh, people in places throughout Plymouth County that highlight what a great place Plymouth County is, some of our great history. So the first image you're going to see is the story of the quarterback before Tom Brady, Drew Bledsoe. A lot of people couldn't name him. He was an NFL quarterback from 1993 to 2001, and he lived in Plymouth County. He was drafted first overall in the 93 draft and was a starter in his rookie year. His first season, the Patriots improved from two wins to five. In 94, they earned their per first postseason appearance in eight years and a Super Bowl appearance in 1997. He was in the Pro Bowl that year. He later played with the Bills and the Cowboys, but he'll always be known as the face of the Patriots during that era. <clears throat> in 2011, the Patriots announced they were retiring Bledsoe's number 11. And since his retirement from football, he's been involved in numerous ventures, including the opening of Double Back Winery. The next um, one is a place in Plymouth County, again, that not many people are aware of. It's called the Skim Milk Bridge. And it's at a crossing between Bridgewater and West Bridgewater, uh, back um, over an old county road that crossed um, a river, the town river down there. It was a stone bridge. 
and it was a major conduit for trade in that era between our area and um, uh, places south, including the Taunton Seaport. Um, Taunton had a very active port at the time. It was a dry stone construction bridge without mortar. The stones were fit together and um, the stones were pulled to the site by sleds from oxen over the winter. It received its name in an interesting way because when the river rushed through that area, fine particles of, of silt were brought up and gave it a white um, appearance, thus the name Skim Milk Bridge. Uh, the road was discontinued by the county commissioners in 1875. However, if you go down Scotland Street, there's a wildlife trail, mass wildlife trail, uh, with a small parking area. You can walk out and see that. It's part of the Bay Circuit Trail in the Nuckatusset Greenway. And that was brought to us by Joan Pierce of the Mass Fish and Wildlife. The next notable record we have um, is the Willette House. It was built by the Plymouth Colony official in the first English mayor of New York City. And we had shown a couple things at the Registry of Deeds recently to visitors, uh, basically showing uh, the connection between Plymouth Colony and Maine. Uh, and so Maine um, was a, uh, on, um, a trading post developed by the colonists where they would collect furs and ship and sell furs over in England and help pay off the loan they had um, with the venturers, adventurers that funded their original colony to begin with. So that triggered some of our records that related to um, Maine. And Thomas Willett was a person that had spent a lot of time as a colony's trade representative in Maine, even assistant governor of the, of the colony. Um, based upon his trade with New Amsterdam and the Dutch, when the Dutch colony um, of New Amsterdam changed over to New York, he was the person they were most confident with. So in 1665, Thomas Willett became the first English mayor of New York, and he lived in Plymouth Colony. He built his home in Kingston between 1640 and 1653, and then he sold the property to Governor Bradford and left the area for good. So it's a, it is on 27 Wapping Road in Kingston. Um, it's one of the earliest surviving frame houses in the United States and is most likely the oldest house surviving in Kingston. And Susan April, the archivist of the Kingston Library brought that to us. So you can see us on YouTube. Brockton's YouTube site is youtube.com slash the Brockton channels. I want to thank Lorna Green Baker and Christine Richards from our office for helping me put this show together. I want to thank my guest today, Joyce Asak, and Brockton Community Access for their time putting this together, along with Mike Simmons, who was the, my host and the cameraman. And also thank you to the many local access providers that share this show with them so that people are aware uh, what is happening out there in the real estate market uh, people's homes are their most valuable asset, most cases across Plymouth County. And I think it's important we continue to share what's happening in the marketplace. So this was my 95th show here at Brockton Cable Access. Um, the summer's coming to an end very quickly, but I'll see you next month.